Tom, good to see you again. And you've got Lee Anderson with you, I believe, now. I do indeed. He's sitting right next to me, so let's dive straight in. Um, Lee, we were just hearing uh, from a member of Dawn's panel that, uh, in her belief, people who voted for Reform UK are racist. What do you say to that? Well, what a load of nonsense that is. What sort of evidence is this? Uh, who is this person on the panel? Who is he? It's Scarlett Maguire, the former yeah, Labour advisor. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I don't know why you have her on, to be honest. But She's a lovely lady. She's got no proof at all. Ask her right now. What's the proof is? What's well, the proof? We'll, we'll, come back, we'll come back to the studio they in use a bit, this, this racist term, what they use all the time, Tom, it's a lazy argument to mm. have a pop at people like me and Nigel and the rest of the Reform Party. They have absolutely no proof whatsoever. They need to get a grip. It is, of course, something that has dogged the party and dogged Nigel um, for a while, this, this sort of um, association, I suppose. Um, what, what, what has this conference, do you think, done to try and move past some of those associations and, frankly, some of the candidate issues that we saw in the general well, what election? We've seen, we've, well, we are, as you know, a start-up party, but what we've seen this weekend, Tom, is 4,000 members from all over the country all different, you know, different colours, skin, different religions, all come together in one big building to celebrate the success of reform. This country does need reform. And there's this scarlet lady who's, who's coming out with these ridiculous comments. Honestly, I, I want her, before she, she comes on the next show, to produce some proof that reform or neither or myself are racist or made in a racist company. And you know what? They can't. They cannot do it. OK, we'll park that issue for yeah, now. Park it. Because this has been the first professional conference yes. of the Reform Party. Uh, I went to the conference last year. It was a tenth the size of this. Uh, Nigel Farage has been saying this week that he feels this party is coming of age. What does that mean? It does. It, it is coming of age. Like I say, Tom, 4,000 people in there. I think next year there's going to be 8,000 people in that room. We've had nearly 3,000 new members in the last 24 hours sign up to join Reform UK. The, uh, the excitement out there is unbelievable. People are coming up to me saying they want to be councillors, they want to become MPs, they want to deliver leaflets, they want to get involved, they want to raise, raise money. You know, the main two parties, Tom, have quite frankly let the public down. The public are very nimble now in their voting. They can pick and choose now which way they're going to vote. And people see us as a credible option. And the speeches yesterday were brilliant. The atmosphere in that place there was something I've never experienced before. You know, you've got to... Look at the other conferences coming this week, and they'll be sat there talking to each other in the audience, not even listening to the main speakers. Every single, and I am biased, because yeah. I was speaking yesterday, but every single speaker in there yesterday was a different class. It is interesting. In your speech, you decided to take out a letter that you had received from uh, the television licensing yeah. people. Uh, and rip it up on stage. What was that about? Well, uh, you know my opinion on the BBC. And listen, I've always said, ever since I stopped paying my TV licence, that the BBC would not get another penny off me. And they've got a bit of a cheat keep sending me reminders to pay my, my TV licence. I'm not paying anything that funds the pension of perverts like Hugh Edwards. Do you think that this uh, potentially puts you at risk of imprisonment? Do you watch live television? Well, listen, they can come round, they can knock on my door, and they'll get told to clear off. Wow. Yeah. That is... How's that grab you? There are, of course, people who have been fined, who have been sent to prison for non-payment. Yeah, you get sent to prison for non-payment. I don't watch live TV. Um, I get all my stuff off... I watch a bit of Netflix, obviously, but I don't watch uh, much TV, to be honest with you, Tom. I think it's a bit of a cheek. It's a poor service. It's... Uh, we've seen just, you know, just this week over this, well, the last couple of weeks with this, this other scandal, uh, this Hugh Edwards scandal. I'm not paying my money to an organisation that does that. Absolutely shocking. This should be a shame. In fact, in fact, this uh, Director General, whatever his name is, the sort of money they've been paying Hugh Edwards over the years, he should pay that to the victims of these children. These, these, these children are victims. That's a strong statement. Yeah. Your, your speech yesterday repeatedly used the mantra, I want my country back. What does that mean to you? Well, if you probably if you ask somebody like Scarlett Maguire, she would probably say that's racist. But in my speech, I, I want my, my education system our health system, law and order, defence, immigration system, our borders. I want them to go back, Tom, to how they used to be when they used to work in this country. It's as simple as that. This has been a moment at this conference where a lot of people are talking about the next election, assumed to be 2029, and the possibility that the Reform Party could win that election. Is that a credible thing to say? 
I mean, if you said that to me, you know, four or five months ago when I first joined the party, I would have said, you, you, you know, you, you're crazy. But now, I mean, look at the start Sakir Starmer's had. The Conservative Party are in a real mess. They're going to pick a leader more of the same. Um, and, you know, the, the, the political ground, if you like, Tom, is quite fertile at the moment for a new party to, to grow. We are growing thousands of new members, lots of volunteers. Like I say, the two main political parties, people are switching off from them and people will come out. They've got an alternative now, a credible alternative. And they're, they're going to see what's gone off this weekend and they're going to come out and vote for us. It took 30 to 40 years for the Labour Party to grow from a handful of uh, members of Parliament to being in government. And only then with a minority administration at the start of the last century. Why do you think that reform could do it faster? There was no TikTok then, was there, Tom, or social media or any of that sort of stuff? People are more switched on now, they're more alert, they're not getting the news a week later. They're getting it just like that, and that's what they love about, you know, uh, about the, the social media age we live in. They can keep up to date, they can keep politicians like me, we're, we're accountable. It's, it's instant, it's in their hand, and people are really engaged. It's like a soap opera at the moment, politics, it really is. And, and the people of this great country of ours have got a stake in it. What do you imagine Nigel might be saying? <laughs> uh, pretty much what he's been saying all weekend, Tom, which is the country needs reform. Um, we are a growing party. The People's Army are out in mass this weekend. There's a real sense of political optimism. Mm. People think that there is a credible alternative now. They think reform is, is the way forward. We're listening to people. You know, politics is not that difficult, Tom, in my opinion. Go home, have a weekend like I do, listen to people in your constituency, go back to Parliament the week after and ask the same questions they're asking. And that's what the reform MPs are doing in Parliament at the moment. The people out there can see that and they want more of the same. Of course, a colleague of you of yours has been in hot water this weekend in the Financial Times. They're saying it's a disgrace that he donates his salary to charity. I'm talking, of course, about Rupert Lowe. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, I mean which idiot has said this? I mean, it's unbelievable. There's been, there's been a sudden... I think since we... Um, since we got elected the five MPs, there's been a, a, a sudden influx of uh, idiotic comments from, from people like this. Rupert Lowe, yeah, he's a wealthy man, we know he is. But to donate £5,000 a month to, to local good causes, I mean, that's great, surely. I mean, more of that, please. There have been uh, anonymous MPs from other parties saying that it makes them uh, look bad by yeah. comparison and that they're quite upset by this. Oh, I don't know why they're upset about it. They should be encouraging this sort of behaviour. And these anonymous MPs, they, are, they probably are anonymous in their own constituencies, Tom, most of them. And it'll be the, the usual Labour lot, I suspect. I suspect there's a few Tories in there. But at a time when we've got a Prime Minister accepting you know, glasses and suits, his missus is going dresses and frocks and whatever, he's going to football matches, raking in thousands. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Keir Starmer is the UK's most prolific scrounger, possibly the biggest in the Europe. It is extraordinary how this new government has sort of fallen into the traps of the last government. Of course, for a time you were a Conservative MP. Yes. Do you see parallels between uh, the sort of uh, mired scandal that we saw uh, about halfway through the last administration happening just two months what into this one? It's, it's, it's like a blind hypocrisy. I mean, when it was, things were happening within the, the Conservative Party, the Labour Party was very quick to call these out and, and go on every single platform and, and make a song and dance about it. But hey, presto, just ten weeks after being elected, they're, they're doing actually worse. I mean, the Prime Minister of our country on a massive salary is, is, is taking freebies like this. It's, it's unbelievable. I think he's took more freebies than anybody. And they've actually stated now that I think him and Angela and, and Rachel Reeves aren't going to accept any more free clothes. I mean, what the hell is going on? Of course, what they might say is that this is all within the rules. People are allowed to accept donations. You can declare your donations on your own register of interests. I mean, this is, this is normal. This is politics. Yeah, but they keep saying that the people with the broadest shoulders have got, you know, they've got to take the hit uh, whilst we're in a little bit of a mess at the moment. And it would appear that if you're a politician earning really good money, good salary, good expenses, that you can put your hand out, put the begging bowl out, and some rich donor will come along and kick you out, kick you out with a, a new set of clothes. It's wrong. Why do you think it is that Keir Starmer has £1,500 glasses? <laughs> I don't know. They must, I don't know. I've never seen a pair of spectacles for 1500 quid, Tom. Um, I don't know. It's probably uh, some top designer brand. I don't know what, what brand it is, but it, it's probably a bit of a show-off, is it? I don't know. He likes to wear his designer stuff, go to the Arsenal matches. I don't know. I mean, a box, eight, eight grand a, a game for a box at Arsenal. He needs that for his security. Look, Rishi Sunak, he used to go to the Southampton games and, and sit with the crowd. I go to Forest games and sit with the crowd. It's a load of nonsense. It's freeloading.
It's a, it's a strong it's a strong term to use against the government because, of course, they might say that this is an unfair well, is criticism. It why is it strong? It's freeloading, it's sponging, it's scrounging, it's getting freebies. Left, right and centre, Tom. That is sponging. If you was in the bar last night, which I'm sure you was, and you didn't buy a pint all night and, you, and I was buying all your drinks, people would accuse you of being a sponger. It's the same with Sakir Starmer. It's a, it's, a, it's a heavy charge because this is a government that has said it's stuck to the rules. Do you think that it matters whether or not they stuck to the rules? Well, I think you should show a bit more now, political now, if, I, if I'm honest, Tom. You know, people are struggling in this country, you know, struggling to heat their homes that the Labour Party's been banging on about for the past goodness knows how long. As soon as they come into power, they get caught out. They've been caught with their trousers down. They're at it. The snouts are in the trough. And I tell you what, the Labour conference, I think, starts tomorrow. Uh, there'll be some, some unhappy members there, Tom, really unhappy. Well, I will test the mood of the floor the uh, in Liverpool at the Labour Party conference. I'm off there uh, this evening. But for now, Lee Anderson, thanks very much for joining us.